Hey everybody, JJ here from Custom Van Campers. I'm really excited to show you guys my newest van build. Uh, I just completed it a couple days ago and it's now officially ready to sell and move on to someone who will appreciate this as much as I have enjoyed building it and tested it out, of course. But essentially this is a 2018 Ram Promaster 159 wheelbase tall roof. As you can see, I got plenty of room uh, here. I'm a little short, uh, five foot eight, but anyone up to six foot two can stand up in here, no problem. Uh, and I want to just give a little bit overview on why I choose uh, the Ram Promaster and kind of my philosophy on these adventure mobiles uh, that I build. But I really love the Promaster for a couple reasons. Uh, one being is its affordability. Uh, it's about 25% cheaper than the Mercedes, uh, especially it's probably 40% cheaper than the Mercedes 4x4. Uh, and then the the other option is the Ford Transit, which only comes in a rear-wheel drive option. Uh, so I really like the Ram Promaster because it's a front-wheel drive vehicle. I'm in the mountains a lot. I love to snowboard. And I need something that gets good traction up there. You know, I don't want to have to worry about... Every time I go hit snow, I need to throw chains on it, you know, and whoever buys this van is is going to be traveling as well. And so that front wheel drive is really nice. The affordability, uh, you know, you can take this anywhere, has universal parts, anyone can work on it. You know, oil changes are 30 bucks versus say 150 uh, with the Mercedes. You get really good gas mileage uh, with the Ram Promaster 2. I've been averaging about 17, 18 miles per gallon on the highway, which I think is a really good uh, gas mileage considering, you know, the size of the van and then all the interior uh, features. And you can even tow up to 5,000 pounds on the back, which is an added. But yeah, so the affordability, gas mileage, front wheel drive. It also is best in class uh, for parking. The turning radius is the tightest and I have no problem. I can park in any normal standard uh, parking spot, no problem. And even with the rear view camera on the back, your little parallel parking where you're trying not to hit, you know, the curb or the cars in front and behind you no problem in this van so it's really easy to park it's easy to drive it's affordable front wheel drive so anyways i've been using this is the second uh, time i've used this ram pro master and i'll continue to use this platform and chassis uh, i really like it and it's a, it's a smooth easy ride as well um, also with all of my van builds i really focus on uh, solar power so up on the roof i've got two 160 watt flexible energy solar panels for a total of 320 watts uh, down here in the battery bank i have a 200 amp hour energy uh, gel closed cell battery so it doesn't uh, put out any emissions and then i've also got a 40 amp uh, energy rover charge controller which does all the computing and you know, monitors everything, doesn't overcharge the battery. Uh, you can look at all your inputs and outputs with amps on what you're bringing in from the sun versus what you're outputting uh, to all your appliances and everything. And so the solar power is meant to run everything in here from the TV uh, to the Dometic fridge, uh, to the fan in the back, to all the solar lights, and then anything DC that you might plug in. I've also got a 1500 watt inverter, so your laptops, um, your cell phones. I've even got a couple little plug in over here for the cell phones to whether you want to charge, you know, photography gear. I'm an amateur photographer. I'm always charging up stuff. So very important for me to, to have, you know, to be off the grid. Basically, if you just get three or four hours a day of sunlight, you can run anything in here and, and never have to worry about plugging into the grid. I've been using solar for about 10 years now on past RVs and trucks vans and even my home is is solar powered as well so I'm, I'm a big believer in renewable energy and it's a perfect platform to use in these custom vans like this um, also my philosophy kind of on the builds um, I'm I'm technically building adventure 
vans, right? So I'm not building RVs per se. There's a lot of people out there that would love to have a nice shower in it and an elaborate toilet system and everything. And, and for me personally, with what I'm doing here, um, I kind of think that's not a great use of space. These vans are a little bit smaller than an RV and I'd much rather use that space back there in the back for, for your toys, you know, whether you're hauling snowboards and skis or surfboards, you know, kayaks, camping gear, climbing gear, mountain bikes, whatever. I mean, there's, I could really create a, a space in the back uh, for that. And I like also having an open floor plan. You don't want to, a lot of the RVs that you walk in, there's like walls everywhere and all these nooks and crannies. And you just kind of feel like you're walking down a corridor that's just a little too tight and enclosed for me. I want, I want an open space. And yeah, I could create a lot more cabinetry in here and whoever buys this van could come in and add that. But I personally like the open space and I didn't want to, you know, take up 25% of the space in here with a shower or with, you know, a toilet. I did compromise on this van though. So for all you people out there like, ah, I need a toilet. I need a shower. So I actually have a portable uh, toilet in the back and I'll show you guys a little bit in, in a little bit on that, but it's only about this big and you can leave it in here or you can take it out. And it's a, it's a self-contained system. It's flushable and you can take it to any RV uh, dump station anywhere and, and dump it. Or you can even take it inside to a house uh, or to a business. It's got a little container. You can dump it right into the toilet and get rid of it the right way. Um, so that's a nice feature. And then I also have a rinse kit. Both, both of these are brand new. Uh, a rinse kit is a pressurized uh, system that you can hook up to a hose. And then it also has a hot water nozzle. So if you go inside and you want to put hot water in it, and then you uh, basically can get about three or four showers out of it. You know, say you just went on a nice mountain bike uh, excursion, you come back, your bike's all muddy, you're muddy, you can clean yourself, your bike's off. If you have pets with you, uh, you can clean them off. It works really well um, as a portable shower system. And it doesn't take up all the space that it would in a traditional RV. So the van comes with both of those and each of those only takes up that much space and you can move it around or not even take it with you if you want. So like I say, I build adventure mobiles. Um, this probably isn't for everyone. Some people want to want their pee and poop to just go away magically. And you know, it's, you can in this, but, but not in the traditional way. But anyways, uh, that's kind of my overall philosophy on these uh, builds. Um, everything in here is completely insulated as well. Um, all the walls have two inch insulation. Uh, ceiling one inch and half inch uh, on the floor. So insulation makes a big difference, you know, when you're in a hot, humid environment. I live here in the southeast. We all know the summers here are just... Um, they're, they're, they're hot and wet. So the, the insulation really makes a difference in kind of keeping that hot or cool out or in, you know, depending on the season and also helps maintain a little bit of that, that moisture. And I also have vents in the front that I'll show and the fan, uh, in the back that really makes a big difference, um, in, in keeping the temperatures where you, you want it and also controlling that moisture as well. So that's pretty much it overall, and uh, we'll kind of go into the individual features now. Gonna start with the front of the van. Got these custom light sun blockers, reflective, give you a lot of privacy, plus keep that hot heat, sun heat out in the summer. I've got them for all the windows in the front and the back actually. So the sides will have these, they're just not in right now. And then these also fantastic vents uh, that allow cross ventilation in the front and the driver's seat. And they also have louvers on them, which keep the rain out and it's done a great job. I've never had any rain come in, no matter how hard it's raining. And then there's a screen in there as well. And that keeps the bugs out, which we all hate, uh, especially mosquitoes. And these work great in conjunction with the fan in the back, which I'll get to in a minute. But anyways, you step on in. Welcome. So I've got the swivel seat. Obviously, it's turned around right now, but when you're driving it, you want to, it just swivels right back and locks into place. But I use this all the time. It's a great place to sit. Comfortable. You can watch TV. Sometimes I work on my laptop here. Read. 
and then a great view to the outside. I've also got a custom screen with a door in the middle so you can keep the bugs out with that as well and I'll add a picture of that. And then moving over to the sink and dinette which is basically a bathroom vanity. It's a 36 inch. So you got the stove here and I've made it to where it could be portable so if you want to prep food here whatever or you can take the stove outside. This is a really nice Iwatani butane stove. It cooks very efficiently. It has a little butane tank in there and it's one of the only ones that's rated for indoor use. You still want to vent obviously just you know crack the windows open a half inch when you're cooking to make sure you don't have any carbon monoxide poisoning. You got a backsplash there. Nice magnet. Really strong. I just put random stuff up there so you can tell. And then the sink. So I did a little bit different this time. I went with a foot pump that people use in marine boats, whatever. So it works pretty simple. You just put your foot down here, start pumping, turn that on, and uh, you have water. So it's it's very efficient. Uh, there's not a whole lot of plumbing to it that can go bad. It's not gonna you know, freeze and burst with pressure. And then underneath, you've got the fresh water tank, seven gallons, and a gray water tank where the water drains into. And then both of these are real easy to pull out, you know, just pull the tube out, fill it with water, or pour out the gray water. And then also I've just got basic storage on here. Here's the storage for the stove. Uh, this is the tarp awning. I'll show a picture of that as well too. Fire extinguisher. I just keep some cleaning stuff, trash bags, and of course a, a little dustpan. More storage here on the sides. And you've got two drawers for storage. I put these cool little tree gadgets and bear guys on there. And then the, over on the side, you've got two storage as well. I just keep my Helinox camp chair and hammocks, stuff that are easy to grab and take out and hook to trees. Uh, storage up here. I mean, someone could always put in something bigger. I like this. It's basic. I just keep my coffee and tea and some vitamin, obviously paper towel roll. Over here, you've got quite a big storage. Uh, this is where I keep those custom blockers that I was talking about. And then here are the two side windows, but it's pretty deep and goes back pretty far. I've, I've put a lot of like winter clothes up there, um, jackets and hoodies and sweatshirts. Coming over to the TV. Sorry, you're getting all the reflection. I think this is a 21 inch TV and it swivels. So if you're on the bed, or if you want to watch it towards the front seat and it goes back. It does have an HD antenna, which is kind of hidden down here. And then you can put it in the window and, and wherever you are in cities, I mean, I found that I get quite, quite a lot of channels actually, um, probably about anywhere from 10 to 15, all your usuals, ABC, um, CBS, NBC, Fox, all that. And obviously you can run it to a computer and, you can also do Netflix and um, Hulu. A little thermometer padding behind it with some fake leather. And then here's a little spot that I've got the fridge plugged into and it's got two USB ports right there so you can charge uh, your phone or iPad or whatever. Underneath here is the fridge. Uh, you can use it as a 100% fridge or 100% freezer. I'm obviously using it as a fridge and these wire baskets can come out as well. Uh, this Dometic fridge is great. It runs off very little energy. I'm very happy with it. And you can see I've got a custom pad here I made so you can sit on it, two inch foam, and then one over here as well. And then I've got a little hidden table that slides out. So boom, you got a dinette for two or a workstation, or you can prep food here. Uh, it's very functional use and then locks away when you're not using it. Underneath that, you've got 10 drawers. Um, this is where I keep, usually keep like my clothes on one side, food on the other, or you can do, you know, his and hers or hers and hers. Uh, but yeah, a lot of functional space there. Underneath here is where the solar battery is that I was talking about, the 200 amp hour energy and a little bit extra storage on the side. That's where I keep the mosquito netting. A little place down here to put your keys right when you walk in or your wallet. And then you've got the carbon monoxide detector. 
and the charge controller says we're at 100% right now and then the inverter the 1500 watt sine wave inverter this is where the light switch is for the LED lights got a little storage right here next to the bed I just keep you know the remote control some reading glasses little eye blocker right above it is the remote to the fan so we'll do that while we're at it so turn it goes right on and start sucking air out like if you're cooking but you can also reverse it all you got to do is hit this button and uh it'll s slow down switch directions and it'll blow in which is great for those hot summer days this is right over the bed helps keep you cool uh, back there i've got some hooks this is where i'll put some jackets hey and then to turn it off it's really easy Just do that the bed is a queen size bed it's nice memory foam like the tempurpedic and then also have these pull out tables under here which are cool so if you want a little nightstand for your book drink coffee whatever comes out slides right under and then i have one on that side as well and then add a little detail all this white area it's so tough with these vans nothing straight nothing lines up added some fake leather some padding you can kind of rest up against it then we'll check out the back by the way, that's a little shiplap tongue and groove. And then the garage area. This is what I was talking about where you put all your adventure toys. A couple of bikes. And then this is the travel toilet I was talking about. Brand new. 2.6 gallon. Portable. Flushable. And then the pressurized rinse kit that I also talked about. Showers, gear, pets spray nozzle 50 foot outdoor extension cord comes with it and then these are leveling ramps which are great uh, when you're in a place where uh nothing's level and you know and you want to sleep right these things will get you exactly level and then i have the custom window blockers for these windows as well Lots of space. I actually will be adding a, a table here that kind of flips down. That's the last thing I need to do. So you can put an outdoor stove here. This goes all the way around. Suicide style. That's my van. Thanks for checking it out. The price is $55,000. Uh, available immediately. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out on the email posted and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Also, it has a trailer hitch on the back installed. Forgot about that. Thanks for watching. Buy my van.